Boxing Day arrived for Argentina when the country had to either repay its debt or default. Both options not particularly savoury for the economically crippled country. Joining me now down the line is Eric Lecomte, Executive Director of Jubilee USA, to speak about the greater ramifications of this situation. Well, Eric, let's start with the day and what's so important about July 30th for Argentina? July 30th essentially was the day that the grace period expired for Argentina. Uh, they were supposed to make payments to all of their restructured bondholders on June 30th. And so they had a grace period through July 30th, uh, and that has now expired. Well, economically speaking, and what is the situation like on the ground now in Argentina? The country is in a much stronger and much more stable place than it was when it defaulted back in 2001. As the country uh, you know, now goes into another default, uh, it's a very different situation. Although there certainly are economic consequences, this is much more of a technical default that Argentina is facing. Well, you hear the word default and it does sound dramatic. So what sort of consequences will this bring? They will face difficulty in accessing certain credit markets. Uh, they've had that difficulty since their default in 2001, uh, but they'll continue to have that difficulty. And right now the government is very interested in accessing new lines of credit uh, for development within the country. We've seen Argentina reaching out to uh, Russia as well as China in order to find uh, ways to continue to receive credit, um, although they may be shut out of some of the markets. I think there are also some positives in terms of defaulting as well. It's very possible that the government of Argentina made a decision that it was better to default than to comply with an order from New York ordering them to pay hedge funds in full. Uh, because now that they've defaulted, they'll have the opportunity to again restructure payments uh, to bondholders that they're seeking to pay. So what are the country's options moving forward? The country will very likely want to continue payments to the 92% of restructured bondholders. So the way that they're going to most likely do that is either restructure the bonds under Argentine law or, you know, uh, go uh, through English law, recontracting uh, either in, in London, Paris, or, or Frankfurt, uh, since all of those financial jurisdictions do not tolerate the predatory activity that the financial jurisdiction in New York does. Well, vulture funds have dominated the news about Argentina's debt. How prolific are these type of funds and how do they work exactly? Well, you know, these are hedge funds that originally got their start by buying up companies that were in distress, breaking up those companies, selling off parts um, in order to make a profit, uh, and, and then moving on. These vulture funds, according to the World Bank, there are less than 100 firms around the world. What they do is when a country is in financial distress or dealing um, with severe financial issues uh, because of development, because the country is so impoverished, these groups that are popularly known as vulture funds come into a country uh, and they buy up their debt for pennies on the dollar. There are other investors that may want to get out of the situation or cannot wait long enough to recoup their investment in a particular country. And so vulture funds don't invest in a country. They buy up the debt on the secondary market. And then generally, um, vulture funds will make an upwards of 1,400% uh, in profits. So right now, in the case of Argentina, we see uh, uh, two particular funds, NML Capital and Aurelius, that bought up debt after the 2001 default. And right now, if they were to accept the deal that the other 92% of bondholders accepted, uh, Aurelius and NML Capital would make a profit of about 157 times their investment. But they've won a judgment to receive payment in full, uh, which is actually uh, more than 1,200 times uh, what they paid for the debt. Part of the concern um, with the activity uh, is that it disrupts debt restructuring that the majority of legitimate bondholders want to participate in, and that they target monies um, that are needed by a country when they're in recovery or in the poorest countries of the world, they actually target the monies that countries receive from debt relief efforts. Now, Eric, they're not actually doing anything illegal. So isn't this just excellent business for them? And shouldn't the blame perhaps be laid at the feet of 
Argentina's economic policymakers. Although the behavior is legal, uh, it doesn't make the behavior any less disruptive for the international financial system. I think this is one of those few moments when behavior is so extreme, you see essentially uh, most actors that are involved in the financial system around the world lined up on the side of Argentina, not because they agree with Argentina's politics, but because they know the precedent set by this case can disrupt how the international financial system operates. This behavior can disrupt uh, economies uh, in wealthy countries as well as poor countries. Because at the end of the day, Argentina still caucuses with the G20. It's not a poor country. What global actors, what our organization is most concerned with is the precedent that this sets, because this precedent can actually make it difficult for legitimate investors to be able to restructure bonds. It can make it difficult for the financial system to operate. It can make it difficult for any country to be able to receive credit, to be able to lend and be a part of lending and borrowing contracts in a, a proper and forcible manner. And, you know, one of the most extreme aspects uh, is that this behavior actually hurts the poorest people in the world. Since these people in the poorest countries of the world are beneficiaries of debt relief, it's that money that by international law is supposed to build infrastructure, hospitals, and schools. And unfortunately, that's the very money that these extreme actors are collecting. And do you see foreign countries in the region also being affected? I don't think we have to worry about contagion in the sense of hurting other economies globally. For the most part, Argentina's neighbors uh, and other powerful uh, economies in South America, like Brazil, um, are not necessarily connected to Argentina and do have uh, rather strong economies. So I guess it's the billion dollar question of the day, but what in your mind is the solution to Argentina's debt problem? It seems clear that they're not able to pay in full uh, the holdout investors and the vulture funds, because according to the UN Conference on Trade and Development, that would open up Argentina to another $135 billion in claims. And right now they have less than $30 billion in their reserve. So it, I think it, it, the Argentine government has probably made an assessment that it's better to default than to comply with Judge Griza's order. And once they default, it won't be easy, but I think they are likely to go through a process of restructuring again all of the restructured bondholders, the 92% so they can re continue to receive payments either under Argentine law or other friendly uh, international law. Once that happens with, with Argentina, uh, you know, with the energy reserves they have being a G20 country, they will see uh, a, a way to get beyond this current moment and ultimately a way to not pay the holdouts um, and uh, the vulture funds. Eric, thank you. Thank you.